Well, hello to our wonderful family. Listen, today, a great program, great time with Don and Mary Colbert, the doctor himself, Dr. Don Colbert. In my opinion, the smartest doctor when it comes to health, nutrition, and much, much more. And I'm so glad you're with me today on this glorious day. <laughs> so, you know, I wanted, I wanted the doctor to come and talk about health because I really care for you, our partners, that you be healthy, not only spiritually, but also in the natural. And I've known Dr. Don now since the 80s. We're talking back like, <laughs> oh, a long time ago. He was very, very young and so was, so was I very young. <laughs> and dear Mary, his dear wife, been friends with us for ages, literally. And he's become one of the most famous doctors now in the church. I mean, everybody that I know goes and uh, talks to him about their health from Joyce Myers to John Higgy to you name them. They all have had you and they're all friends with you. And that's because of his amazing knowledge of health. So today we, we, we want to cover on how to prevent heart disease, how to prevent cancer. We're going to do that again tomorrow. <laughs> Because, you know, these are the two killers. Right, they're the big killers. But, but first, before we start, just say anything you want. Say hello to anything you want. Well, hey there. And again, I've been practicing medicine now for almost 35 years. Since 19, well, I started actually in residence in 1984, when in full-time practice in 1987. Oh, are you, by the way, graduate? Correct. Oral Roberts University. One of the 333 graduates from Oral Roberts University. Yeah. But what I found over the years, I had to experience some things myself, and I went through a major heat stroke when I was running a race, and literally the muscles in my legs exploded when I was in medical school. And they said I would never walk again. Well, I experienced a miracle. And my legs, literally, the muscles grew back, and they biopsied, took a huge chunk out of my leg, all the way out of my left leg, all the way to the bone, said your muscle is necrosed or dead. It'll never grow back. You'll be in a wheelchair the rest of your life. And the Lord healed me from that. And it was a miraculous, long story. But then after that, about 10 years later, I developed psoriasis. And my body was covered with psoriasis, a horrible, itchy rash that people would look at me and say, hey, is this contagious? And it itched all the time. And the Lord showed me what to do. Medicine didn't fix it. And he showed me it was due to inflammation and it was what I was eating and how my gut was literally, my gut was inflamed. As I healed my gut and changed my diet, the psoriasis totally went away. That was 30 years ago and I've had none since. What I've been doing over the years is finding the root of disease and the root of most every disease, most disease begins in the gut and most healing starts in the GI tract. And most disease at its root is inflammation. You know, I want to talk to the doctor about a few things today that I think would really help you. He's become the doctor, really, to the body of Christ. I mean, you've seen him before. He's on, been on every television, Christian television network, I think, all over America and even beyond that. Doc, can we begin to deal with heart disease? I mean, we hear a lot about it today. Even younger people are developing heart conditions. And then we're going to talk about cancer tomorrow. Yes, uh, yesterday... Sorry, a few days ago, uh, I, I got a prayer request for a young girl for a stage cancer who's dying. I think she's like, you know, under 10 years old. Mm. And I'm hearing more and more right. about cancer in, in the bodies of young children oh, yeah. and young people. We'll deal with that tomorrow. But what the doc is going to talk about is what to do naturally. What, what can we do? In the, in the natural, with nutrients, because they really work. These things really work. So let's begin with heart disease. So give us step-by-step, step, and dear Mary, please help us to step-by-step step things people can do to prevent it, and what do you do if you have it? Well, first, first I need to just explain what causes heart disease. Please. Because most people don't realize over 90% of heart disease is due to chronic inflammation in the body. Our body's inflamed. The foods that are, most foods are inflaming our bodies include the junk food, the sugar, 
the icing on cakes, the donuts. When you talk about inflammation, explain that just in case someone doesn't understand what that really is. Well, inflammation, see, when the body is uh, under, well, first of all, to make it real simple, if you were to have, say, um, a splinter, a splinter in your finger, mm. well, what happens is inflammation occurs, redness occurs until right. you pull the splinter out. When you pull the splinter out, it starts to heal, but still inflammation is there. Now, if that splinter stayed in there, that inflammation would become chronic. And the inflammation that was meant to heal the body starts to slowly destroy the body. And eventually, that inflammation can infect the whole body. Well, inflammation for heart disease starts in the arteries. And it starts with the body forming plaque in the arteries. And what triggers that plaque are certain foods that we eat. Certain foods trigger more plaque than other foods. The food that triggers the most plaque formation are trans fats which are these man-made fats that are in all of these highly processed foods that America loves. They're in your chips, they're in your crunchy foods, your sugary foods, your donuts, your cakes, your cake icing, your, most any sweet has these trans fats in it. And it's still in there, even though it can say zero, because if it has only 500 milligrams per serving, they can label it zero. Mm. So, but that's, that's one of the main causes of fat, as well as deep fried foods or fried foods. When they're fried in these inflammatory fats, like the, the majority of fried foods that you get, like French fries mm. and fried chicken strips and things like that, they're fried mainly in corn oil or in soybean oil. These are highly inflammatory omega-6 oils that create inflammation in our arteries, and they set the stage for heart disease. So again, we got to get to the root of heart disease. So what puts out inflammation, you're saying? We're real simple. It's eating more of a Mediterranean diet and or a healthy keto diet. Now, Doc, can we reverse? Sure. This, let's say nobody knew about that. Right. And they're wondering, okay, maybe I have a problem and don't know it. Right. What can they do to reverse and clean their arteries? First of all, what we have to do is modify the risk factors. What I do is I check a full panel of blood. I check the HS or high sensitive C-reactive protein. Mm. That's a very accurate test for inflammation in your body. If it's elevated or if it's even high normal, I get it down to normal with the diet and with fish oils and anti-inflammatory nutrients. What's and then, so scary? Yeah. What is so scary is people think that they need to feel it. Yeah. And you can't, you can't feel, feel it. it. It's, you si it's a silent this killer. That's right. The inflammation right. inside it's of silent. it is it not like hurt. some sort of sore yeah. mm. like you get in your hand. You can't feel this. So there's blood tests right. that people can do. That's the only way to, to really that, catch that it. That's what? Yeah. It shows whether you have inflammation, excessive inflammation. And also, we got to modify the risk factors like high cholesterol, but even more specifically, the oxidized LDL. Oxidized LDL is the bad cholesterol that forms plaque in your arteries. No one ever tests for that. That is the form of cholesterol that literally forms plaque and sticks to your arteries and forms plaque. Now, why don't they check that? They just, most doctors just check for a lipid panel. But if you want to reverse plaque, you need to know what is your oxidized cholesterol, and then you're going to have to take certain fish oils to stop the oxidation, bring it down to so normal, 60 or below. What, what fish oil helps? Well, there's a bunch of good fish oils out there. We use EPA and DHA, but just uh, one tab twice a day is not enough. I usually put them on like 2,000 milligrams twice a day. But if you're taking a blood thinner, that's too much. You'll have to talk to your doctor. I only put them on, on 1,000. Mm. But what I'm saying is you've got to check the, the, the right test, the lipid panel, the oxidized LDL. You've got to check the blood pressure. If your blood pressure is high, you're going to be developing heart disease. You've got to get the blood pressure down. You've also, you need to get the waist measurement down. The higher the waist is, the higher the inflammation and the C-reactive well, What protein. do you mean by higher waist? Like the, the, the bigger, bigger the waistline. The, waist, okay. the bigger the waistline is, the more inflammation you have. So the waistline is very important to get the waistline down. So we have to modify these risk factors, the blood pressure, the cholesterol, the oxidized cholesterol, the inflammatory marker, we need to get the body extra. Now, how to reverse it? You asked well, a very yeah, important please, question. Yeah. Here's what you have to do. Number one, you've got to start putting in the right combination of macronutrients, that's your proteins, your carbohydrates, and your healthy fats that quench inflammation in your body. Okay, so uh, what foods? Well, that's your 
Mediterranean diet or healthy keto diet. I discuss that in detail in my book, Beyond Keto. So when you talk about keto, are you talking about like what vegetables, what? Well, with most keto diets, that was started with Dr. Atkins long ago, that was the unhealthy keto diet. When they would eat slabs of bacon, huge pieces of steak, and they'd eat butter and things like that, but they would just eat hard, they wouldn't eat any carbs. They wouldn't eat any bread or pasta or potatoes or beans or rice or mm. corn, but they would just eat meat and maybe a salad. Because I heard that was really dangerous. That's not a, that's an unhealthy keto diet. Okay. The healthy keto diet uses healthy sources of meats like fish and turkey and chicken that's not deep fried without the inflammatory cheeses. Cheese is highly inflammatory for a lot of people unless it's feta cheese, it's not so much so. But also lots of veggies, lots of healthy fruits like berries. Berries have these powerful polyphenols in them that help protect your heart and arteries against Can heart we disease. just go back to cheeses? Why is the feta not Well, not feta bad for you? is made from sheep, 70% sheep, 30% okay. goat, and it has no casein A1 in it. Casein A1 is inflammatory, again, the word inflammatory to a lot of people creating inflammation in the body and even in the arteries. Whereas feta cheese and goat cheese and sheep cheese has casein A2. Casein A2 is mm. not inflammatory to the body. That's amazing. So it's so much better for you. So I don't eat regular cheese, I eat feta cheese. And one way well, you can tell if you're sensitive to these cheese is it will produce a lot of mucus. That's if true. you produce a lot of mucus. And I do when I eat cheese. Right, so if you know, it's, it's like, because the, the kind of milk or cheese that you're eating. But also, now again, healthy keto. We're talking about keto first. So lots of veggies, lots of salads. I put olive oil on my salads. I'll put uh, apple cider or red wine vinegar on it or even balsamic vinegar. Lots of salad, lots of colorful veggies, lots of fiber, healthy fibers like psyllium husk powder. Now that's, that's, more, that's a healthy keto, but then you switch up and then low carbs. This is what creates plaque in the arteries is sugar and high sugar levels too. So I check on every one of hemoglobin A1C. It tells me what their sugar has been over the last three months. If your sugar is elevated, you are forming plaque in your arteries. It's that simple. So to reverse it. You've got you, to get do your you, sugar down, your inflammation down. Yeah, but let's down. say you enjoy chocolates. Well, you get the, the, then you, you get the, you get the, you get the dark chocolate, low sugar. That's high in flavor. Because I'm talking about me, because well, I love chocolate. Good. Chocolate's great for your arteries. But, but I've been, I've been eating yeah. that keto chocolate. Well, that's okay. That, but that, that's, that's okay, yeah. right. Keto as long it's low in sugar. That's the key. You want your chocolate. Well, it says no in, sugar. So but that's is that perfect. True? No, that's perfect. That's okay. what you want. But is that true that there's no sugar, even though it's yes, so sweet? Yes, it says no sugar. It's no sugar. Wow, yes. good. But that's good. So what we want, that's, that's the keto. And, but you got to get your sugar down. If you eat a lot of bread, a lot of pasta, a lot of potatoes and corn and rice and uh, starches like that, your sugar goes up. Yeah, but I mean, we need, up. though, the, like potatoes need, and right, bread. Sm right, small amounts. But if you're trying to lose, now again, that's Mediterranean. Yes. Right, because now we again, that's bread why with I that talk too. about, yes, I talk about healthy keto, lose weight and then healthy Mediterranean in order to prevent heart disease and cancer and Alzheimer's disease and healthy aging. So yes, you're right. In that regard, we use especially the healthy carbs. You know, those are your beans, your peas, your lentils. These are high fiber carbs. And there was a study uh, a few years back called the Predimed study, 7,000 people at high risk of heart disease between the age of 55 and 80, 7,000, divided into three groups. Mm. Two groups they put on the Mediterranean diet, like what I just discussed, along with one liter of olive oil a week. The other wow. group, and which is a healthy diet, the other group they put on the Mediterranean diet and a handful of nuts, one ounce of nuts a day. The other group they put on a diet similar to, that was a, uh, a low-fat diet, similar to the American Heart Association diet. They had to stop this study one year early because the two Mediterranean diets that were on the olive oil and on the nuts had 30% less of dying from all forms of heart disease and stroke than the other group that was the, uh, like the American Heart Association diet, which is the- Which is the better one? Which the, is the low fat diet. The best is the Mediterranean. The well, Mediterranean. I know, but, we, but they, they had two of them. They were the same. Oh, really? The, Medi the people who had the olive oil and the people who had the handful of nuts, exactly the low, low risk of heart disease and stroke. 
What kind of nuts are really the, the healthiest? Pistachios, pecans, almonds, walnuts, not peanuts. Peanuts Why? are not a nut. Why peanuts are not good? Peanuts are not a nut. It's a legume. It's a bean. Hmm. So it does not have the protection that your other nuts so the have. So the best nuts are, besides almonds that we hear about all the time. Pecans, walnuts, pistachios, How about Brazil macadamia nuts? nuts. Brazil nuts are high in selenium, so you shouldn't take a lot of Brazil nuts. You'll okay. get too much selenium. Oh. One nut has about 70 micrograms of selenium. So that's all you need a day. So one or two nuts a day is it, if you're going to get Brazil nuts. Uh-huh. But now there are certain nuts too that clean the arteries, they say. Which ones? Like walnuts, well, they say, well, really help. Is that true? Almonds are really good. But, almonds uh, are high in walnuts, no? Walnuts are okay. They're, more, they're higher in polyunsaturated fats. The best fat to clean your arteries is actually olive oil. Right. Olive oil. Well, well we, we've known that for a long time. And, we and fish oil, those two. Those two are your best oils to Like clean every oil. morning, I take the uh, fish oil good, uh, good. With, a, with, a, with a spoon. It doesn't good. taste the best. <laughs> but I put, uh, it's actually, I, I buy the mm-hmm. one that's mixed with the lemon. Good. Well, it's that's quite fine. nice. But, yeah. but, but I mean, mm-hmm. uh, back to the, if we can talk about like nuts, because right, I know sure. a lot of us like Sure, to, to nuts are nuts. great for you. So yeah. no, no peanuts, but yes, almonds. Yes, what? Walnuts. Well, yeah, and, walnuts and are great. Uh, macadamia, macadamia nuts. What about cashews? Cashews are one more inflammatory. They're not as healthy as. But the if other we eat nuts. some, cashews. some is okay. okay. Yeah, some is not going to. Because some are so tasty, you can't. Right, stop and that's uh, yeah. Those are okay. almonds, <laughs> of course, are one like of the best. That, yeah. I uh, love pecans. I personally, my favorite nuts are macadamia nuts, pecans, walnuts. But not, and and, and, and they, they do help in cleaning your arteries. Sure, right? they help, and pistachios too. Pistachios are good too. And now with with olive oil, I know that's the like big headline yes. about cleaning your arteries with yes. olive oil. Mm-hmm. What kind mm-hmm. and how often? Well, the key, mm-hmm. we have new types of olive oil now. There's organic extra virgin olive oil that's been around, but now we find there's even better classes of olive oil. There's now the high polyphenol olive oils. Which is? The polyphenols, there's 36 polyphenols in olive oil. These are powerful antioxidants that literally decrease inflammation in your arteries and in your body. But you and you and dear Mary uh-huh. told me that you have to taste it in your throat. If it's yes, good, right? yes. And now here's how you'll know that an olive oil is high in polyphenols. When you take a teaspoon of it, put it in your mouth, and you swallow it, it'll burn the back of your throat and you'll yeah. cough. Now this is important. Now a lot of people think, you oh, cough? Have, yeah. every, every time? Yes, it's called the ibuprofen effect wow. because it has a powerful anti-inflammatory effect. But when you have a good olive oil, you'll have that little cough. It just lasts a second or two and you'll have that burn in the back of your throat. When you have that, that is a powerful, strong olive oil with powerful polyphenols. And can I also suggest one more thing that I know from Israel? Make sure you buy the unfiltered yes. olive oil. The extra so version. If, if right. you can see through it, no good. If it's foggy, good. Yes. And so, because we grew up with that. Yeah, oh, and you absolutely. you see a lot of people in my part of, of the world, no heart disease hardly among a lot of them. Right, right. Because they really have that special right. olive oil it's that's so thick, you, it's so foggy, you can't see through it. Right. So when sure. I go to a, to a store, right. I hold the bottle. Exactly of it. right. If I can see through the thing, don't buy it. But uh-huh. if, it's, if it's foggy, you can drink it. But also what I do with my olive oil, I take my olive oil in restaurants a lot of times. I'll take a little bottle, mm. and when I get my salad, I'll pour that, I'll pour four tablespoons of that or, or more on my salad. But now they say uh-huh. you should not cook with it. And then I, no, you shouldn't I, cook. Yeah, you but I it. heard that, you know, one, one guy say, no, that's not true. Well, let so me tell you one. True? Here's what's true. If you cook under low heat, you're okay with olive oil. Okay. But if you cook that olive oil over 320 degrees, it'll oxidize and form inflammatory compounds. Whereas if you have to stir fry or something like that, use cold pressed avocado oil. Its smoke point is 570 degrees. But is it okay to buy uh-huh. avocado oil that's not organic? Because most stores don't carry the organic stuff. Well, yes, it's, it's okay because it's encased. And see, with avocados, it has that thick peel. Right. So pesticides are not going to get in. Okay. So, so this you're is, safe. Just like a this banana. This is important, yeah. sweet people. Like, yeah. you know, if, the, if, if there's a thick like a banana, right? Banana, watermelon. you're safe. You don't have to get organic bananas. That's that thick pill. The pesticides. Really, we, we, yes. we don't have to get organic no, bananas. No, you don't have and to. And here's me getting all the organic bananas. <laughs> Every time I go, I, I've got to be organic, brother. You don't have to. So, so, with, so avocados. with avocados too, don't have yeah. to be organic. They wow. don't have to. Now again, it's 
if you want to be the purest sense of the word, there could be a few little pet, but it's minuscule compared to what other uh, foods like spinach and berries, you need to be organic because they have a thin peel and they accumulate pesticides. Okay, now eggs. Now they, they used to say eggs, the yellow, don't eat the yellow, eat the white. And I'm always asking, well, why, why did God put that yellow in the middle? Well, so, let, but which well is which let me now? explain. Eggs are generally, for the majority of people, okay. Eggs are actually real good for your brain. They're high in uh, choline that helps produce the main memory nutrient called acetylcholine. They also contain lutein that's good for your eyes. So eggs are good for you, the yolk especially. But if you cook it in butter or if you cook it in coconut oil, that's saatuated fat. Too much saturated fat, again, okay. when you get that oxidized, it'll So it's it'll okay form... to, to like fry eggs, but in different oils. Right. I, I, she cooks my I eggs in avocado, avocado oil. Exactly. Wow. And I'll have, right. I'll have two it's eggs. Right. I'll have two eggs maybe three days a week. But then I'll have, I'll, it's cooked in avocado mm. oil. And then I'll have half an avocado with that. And then I'll, some days I'll have a bowl of oatmeal with berries and nuts in it. And uh, I put my berries on. I don't use any sugar. But because of the fiber, the fiber is so good for us. Okay. And Americans then don't get I have, fiber. I have a great suggestion for you, which I eat about twice a week. May I cook with Sure, all? please. I take one tomato, I cut it in pieces. I take mm -hmm. some, some cucumbers. Mm -hmm. I take some, uh, uh, those red things. What do you call those red things Peppers? again? No, Peppers? No, no. It's okay, Chad knows. Okay. Uh, <laughs> anyways, so I take these vegetables, I mix them up, and I, I take some, like, you know, sweet peppers and right, right. and put, put feta, huh? Pimento? No, no, no it's okay. okay. It'll come to me. Okay. Anyways, but you, you, you can use whatever, you know, mm -hmm. vegetables you want. And then I put olives in there, and right. I put olive oil and balsamic vinegar, mm. and I put some... Wow. Uh, some uh, pumpkin seed in there. Wow, sounds and I put good. Two eggs on top. Wow. And brother, it's a good wow. one. That's awesome. Good for you. Sometimes I'll good put some onions in there. It, it depends. You can mix your eggs with some nice, clean, good vegetables for you. Mm -hmm. And then you can really see some. Exactly. Yeah. Now, but, again, that's great. But unfortunately, most Americans aren't doing that. They're eating eggs that are fried with butter or grease, they're eating bacon which we're going to talk about cancer tomorrow, but that opens the door for cancer unless you use fiber to bind it. And then they got a keto breakfast, but it's not a healthy breakfast. What's and they're a, inflamed. What is a keto breakfast? A keto yeah. breakfast is where you have real low carbs, less than five grams generally, high fat, 70, 75% fat, mm. and moderate protein, about 20 grams of protein. That's a uh, keto diet. It's macros. About and 70% you, fat. He, yeah. he, he goes into detail with his right. book, Beyond Keto. So they, they can recipes get your, and your, everything. your book in bookstores. Oh, right, in bookstores or Amazon. And you wherever. talk about all that. Yes, I do. I talk about the healthy keto, which 99% of people are on the unhealthy keto, and the healthy Mediterranean diet, both. Which both are very healthy. If you need to lose weight, follow the healthy keto. If you need to maintain weight and prevent heart disease, cancer, Alzheimer's disease, and age healthy, follow the healthy Mediterranean. What milk stock? Milk, good question. What, what's the best? Well, the best milk, again, I don't drink a lot of milk. If I have milk and, I, and dairy, I'll have goat uh, yogurt. I'll have uh, sheep yogurt, coconut yogurt. I will have uh, casein A2 milk in small amounts. The casein A2 does not, is not as inflammatory. I can take that and I don't get the mucus or inflammation. Otherwise, I get inflammation. But with now milk. a lot of people are switching to almond milk. And, and almond milk, coconut milk is good. Um, even some people do cashew milk, even some people oat milk. Those are better and much less but inflammatory. But how about all the skim milk that people buy? Well, skim milk still has the casein A1 in it. And a, casein A1 is inflammatory. It has less fat, less saturated fat, right. which is a good thing. But it's still inflammatory because it has but inflammatory not soy. protein. Forget but not soy. soy. Why? Why? Why is soy bad? Soy is so bad for men because it elevates the estrogen level, and it, it causes men. Many men have develop uh, breast tissue with it, uh, feminization tendencies, and it's n just not a good form of milk for men to have, or soy. Period for most men. So. Those who want to reverse heart disease, are they allowed to eat chicken and yes, fish? Yes, chicken and fish, and, but, but not no. fried, but not fried chicken, okay. not Kentucky fried. And no all meats. The deep fried. Or, well, or red meat, maybe. but just small amounts. See, the Mediterranean diet, they're allowed to eat meat once or twice a week, but small amounts. Here in America, we eat red meat every day. 
and pork every day. And again, those are inflammatory meats. We need a lot of that. It opens the door for heart disease and cancer. With the Arabic diet, which is the same as Middle right. Eastern, mm -hmm. uh, meat is only for taste. Mm -hmm. that we, we don't Small we, amounts. We didn't eat yes. meat at all. My mom would cook the nice kibbeh. Very good. And she'd put some meat in it. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, of course, a lot of you know what kibbeh is. Or like the hummus, we put some lamb hummus, yeah, on good. top yeah. with olive oil and mm -hmm. nuts and all See, that. See, the olive oil and the fiber and the beans bind toxins and increase fiber and move the, those carcinogens out of your body. Whereas Americans, don't, they don't have enough fiber. Men need 38 grams of fiber, women 25 grams. They're not getting that. They're getting half or less than half of what they need. Only 5% of Americans get the fiber they you need. You mentioned uh, lentil soup. Oh, lentils are great for you. Now, you know, I yeah. like I like uh, eating Fine. lentil soup with like carrots. Sure. And great. some Wonderful. onion and garlic. Excellent. Excellent for you. Sometimes I'll put some other vegetables. We'll put some olive it. oil in there too. Oh, a lot of olive sure. oil. I absolutely. Do, I can make a real lentil soup. Now, that's, that's wonderful for you because you're getting all that fiber. Now, some people have uh, sensitive digestive tracts, and so they don't do good with beans, peas. So what we have them do is pressure cook their beans or peas or lentils, and they pressure cook them seven and a half minutes. Oh. It destroys the lectins, which cause the bloating and gas. So they can eat their beans, peas, and lentils with no problems. They pressure cook them in a pressure cooker for seven and a half minutes. Isn't that cool? The now, simple one more question, we, we don't sure. have a whole lot, but, and, and tomorrow we, we got to talk about cancer and so much more. Preventing cancer, we're hearing so much about it now, wow. But I, can I just quickly talk about juices? Like what are the best juices to drink without sure. all the sugar in it? Absolutely, juices are full of sugar. I'm real cautious with juices. What I do is I have a Vitamix, I have a Blendtec, I have a Nutribullet, and like what I did yesterday. Okay. I have some organic frozen strawberries. I fill my little Nutribullet half full of frozen strawberries. So you don't actually buy juices from the store? No, it's full of sugar. You, are you, you kidding? You, you do are, your own. Yes, I make and my you own. Put, and you yes. put what now again? I got organic frozen strawberries. Okay. I put it in my Nutribullet half mm. full. Then I have triple washed organic kale, the king of veggies. Wow. And I put it half, the other half full of kale. And then I put a little stevia in there, a half teaspoon. We freeze the uh, kale. kale. Yeah, we freeze yeah. it in the freezer. Yeah, I made that mistake, put it in my fridge, wow. and it goes bad after a week or two. Wow. I keep it in the freezer in a Ziploc freezer bag, so it's all fresh, it's great. Then I put it in my Nutribullet for about 30 seconds to a minute. I have the best, most nutritious drink. And if you want to put some healthy fats in there, some avocado oil you or something like that. You do it in the like morning? That, yeah, I do it in the morning. It, it helps the vision so much, the fiber lowers cholesterol, mm. is so healthy for you. But that's that's the type of juice I have. And it's refreshing, filling, and it is so good And look for how us. good he looks and I ha And I have to tell you, we buy the mm -hmm. uh, organic strawberries fresh. Mm -hmm. I don't buy the frozen the yeah. strawberries. Yeah. I buy fresh strawberries, organic. put them in Ziploc bag right. baggies, right. and freeze them myself. Right. exactly. And that way when we take them out, I, I know the strawberries right. are good. You buy them in the bags, and their bags are well, white. Well, they got you pesticides them. in them, yeah. You don't know what kind of frozen strawberries you're right. getting. But if you get organic fresh, you can freeze but, them. But realize yeah, but juices, idea. most juices are full of sugar. One of the main causes of heart disease is prediabetes and diabetes. And 50% of this population in the U.S. are either prediabetic or diabetic. Wow. And when you have that, you're asking for heart disease. Listen, we're going to pray right now. Lord... Bless your people with health. And Lord, you said that we ought to be informed. Yes. And now, Lord, I pray you'll use this information to bless your people with health. And Lord, I pray that healing and health will be their portion for the rest of their yes, life. Lord. In Jesus' wonderful and glorious name. Amen. And make sure Amen. to get, to get uh, Doc's uh, Beyond Keto, Burn Fat, Heal Your Gut, Reverse Disease, with a Mediterranean keto lifestyle, and that you can get this in all bookstores. Okay, now it's time to give to the Lord's work, and you can do it right there on the platform you're, you're watching me on, or go to our website, benahin.org, or simply text BHM45777, so God can bless you also financially. I remind you daily, listen, in the future, a massive problem will come to this world 
but only those who are giving to the Lord today will be protected from the future. So God not only has promised to bless us today, but bless us tomorrow. I've not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging for bread. Honor the Lord with your substance, the first fruits of your increase, so shall your barns be filled with plenty. <laughs> Amen. And thy presses will burst out with new wine. Lord bless them mightily financially in Jesus' name. Amen. And we'll see you tomorrow for another amazing talk about 